So Google striked again today with the release of Nano Banana Pro, where they took the best AI image model on the planet and made it even better. Characters are now more consistent, images are more crisp, and we are continuing to win the battle against text generation in our AI creations. But the best part of all is the increased control this new tool has given us when it comes to generating our AI images. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all the Nano Banana Pro upgrades, where you can use it, how much it costs, and we're gonna do a number of head-to-head -head comparisons versus its old model so you can see how far we've come. So the first Nano Banana Pro upgrade I wanna draw your attention to is the actual image quality. And so on the left, what you're looking at is the old Nano Banana model, and on the right is Nano Banana Pro. Now I give it a very simple prompt to also test how it does in terms of like guardrails, so hopefully we don't get sore to But I just said, hey, create an image of Elon Musk and LeBron just hanging out. On the left, this doesn't look realistic at all. If I zoom into this, what do we see? It just looks almost cartoonish, right? Almost painted on. It's kind of blurry in the background. The actual details up here are okay. Like, is that a spoon? Like, what exactly is that? But this definitely doesn't pass the initial eye test in terms of realism. Now contrast that with this. Right away, this looks like a real photo. This is done in 1080p, but with Nano Banana Pro, you have the option to go up to 2K or even 4K, and I'll show you how to do that later. But the details here, are crisp and it actually looks like them, right? This looks like Elon Musk. This looks like LeBron. If you saw this on a YouTube thumbnail and you were just passing by, you would think it was real. And the other cool thing is this was done with a very simple prompt. I didn't have to do any crazy prompt engineering to make the lighting look realistic. None of that, it did it all on its own. And the differences between the old model and the new model are night and day. So when it comes to image quality, huge upgrade. So the other big upgrade when it comes to Nano Banana Pro is text and the fact that it has Gemini 3 running in the background to give it context when you tell it things in the prompt. For this prompt, I said, again, show an image of LeBron James holding up a piece of paper that has the names of the Lakers roster written down. So this one on the left, right? This is old Nano Banana. It's using Gemini 2.5 Pro, which does have a later knowledge cutoff date versus three where its cutoff date is January of this year. So the rosters, obviously this one's gonna be more updated versus this one. But if we take a look at the text, Right, so let's take a look at the old model first. So this is somewhat correct, but you will notice there's problems with the name, right? It should be West Brook, not West Book. There's no Anthony Davis. If we take a look up here at the little advertisement that's supposed to be in the Lakers jersey, that's all busted. The ball itself has like a weird double logo in a place it wouldn't be. Also, the text is jacked up. So while if you squint your eyes at the beginning, it looks okay. If you give it any sort of like detailed book, it tends to fall apart. Now versus the pro image, quality obviously way better. This legitimately looks like a picture of LeBron holding up a piece of paper at the Lakers practice facility. Now as for the roster, it grabbed the 2024 roster. And this is correct. This is the roster and this is how you spell their names. Now the text itself is a little too perfect, which is what would give it away for being AI. But in terms of the overall quality being great, right? Notice how good of a job it does with the blur and the content being correct right? Huge upgrade versus the old model. Going to be a lot of LeBron images today. Might have some deep cuts with a banana boat, which is also topical. So be ready for that. Now what you see here is the same prompt, but this time I told it to add the stats of the players on the roster. So over here on the left, again, old image. What do we see? We see a further breakdown of the text and the actual numbers, right? Points, rebounds, and assists. A, it doesn't go down all the way. And B, they're completely jumbled. Like that's 23.3, the three's back, right? Just doesn't, it doesn't hold up. Now we compare it to the pro. Again, image quality looks great. It even changed the background to be more dynamic, right? We have some of the players on the roster, honestly, that kind of looks like Rui and Austin Reeves, even with it blurred out. Now it did change the roster, right? It doesn't have the full list. It just has their starting five. But if you go ahead and check basketball reference, like you'll see these stats are correct, right? These are the points, rebounds, and assists per game for the 24 season for the starting five. So just more of the same. Again, quality is upgraded. The context in terms of getting things right in the image is better. And the text just looks clean. All right, that's enough LeBron. We're turning into ESPN over here. So now what we're testing is, again, it's text, but on a greater scale. So this prompt was create an overcomplicated flowchart showing how large language models work, include lots of text, make it extremely legible. So old one on the left, right? just illegible in part because the resolution isn't high enough right it will not give you better resolution but even if we zoom in right like what 
what is this? Like, again, if you squint your eyes, maybe you can make sense of it, but this just doesn't work. Now compare this to Pro, and again, this is a world of difference. Way more text, it's completely legible, and it makes sense, and they even threw it up on like a whiteboard, right, to make it look like it was a real thing. Now, in terms of does it look real, real? Like, no, because it's almost too perfect, but if we wanted to give it more of a like, hey, someone actually hand drew this like with a marker, you could do that through the prompt. The biggest thing we see here is like, just this just looks good. Like this is legible and now you actually can create, you know, one shot flow charts or infographics with this new image model. All right, so quality is definitely improved. It does better on text. What else have they upgraded with Nano Banana Pro? Well, they've upgraded its ability to take on reference images. So for this one on the left, right, old, the one on the right is new. I put in four reference images for here on the left and I put in eight reference images for the image on the right. And this is what it looked like inside of Gemini, right? I threw it eight different images. These actually came from Midjourney. And I said, create me a professional movie poster design featuring all eight anime bounty hunters from the provided images. And then I gave it a rather longer prompt where I pretty much said like, turn it into a cool looking movie poster, right? Eight different reference images. If you'll remember the old Nano Banana could only take five. And if it really did anything over two or three, it really struggled to the point we had to do sort of hacky things like, okay, we're gonna do a picture collage. You're gonna take all five of your images, actually put it on one image. No more of that, at least with the pro model. And before we compare them, I will say, I gave the old model four of them and it actually did a pretty good job versus what it usually does. Cause like I said, it usually falls apart with multiple reference images, but just right off the bat, you can kind of see this one on the right definitely feels more vibrant and more dynamic. And if I were to go through each of the reference images one by one with you, you would see that the eight, you know, little bounty hunters we have here definitely match the reference images versus the one over here on the left, right? Our older model, it falls apart a little bit, not to mention it added additional things that I didn't tell it, right? I only give it four images, yet it pushed out six in the actual poster. Furthermore, in terms of poster design, right? The one on the right, definitely sort of follows the tropes of, you know, action movie poster and where the text goes, like this looks like what a poster would look like versus this, right? The text on top is just very flat and you have some like, you know, movie poster X-esque things on the bottom, but it doesn't all come together. So again, big upgrade in terms of reference images, which is awesome when you're trying to, again, have more creative control. And I think this is also another plus one in terms of just like, context and knowing what makes sense when I say, hey, do a cool movie poster. Now for this last part, I'm gonna show you how they did when I gave it an image of myself and wanted to make edits to this image or put me in different scenarios. So you can see the prompt here, front view photo, essentially me on a banana throne. Now again, on the left, you have the old model and on the right, you have the new model. Just again, quick eye test. You can tell the one on the right looks a lot more cinematic and less flat, right? A problem we would have with the old Nano Banana model was always trying to fight that like feeling that they just kind of like cut the image out and then pasted it onto a new background. Now, it, this doesn't exactly do that, but it does feel like there is some disconnection between like me on the throne and the background versus here on the right, it flows much more naturally. And then again, in terms of like the actual quality of this image versus this image, and the differences are again, night and day. And the other thing I wanna to bring to your attention is that this one on the right, all the ones I've shown you with Nano Banana Pro, this is at the lowest resolution it can give you, right? 1080p, it goes all the way up to 4K. And we do not have that option with the previous model. And again, we see that pattern repeated here. This time I wanted it to show me like inside of a forest looking for bananas. The one on the left, old model, just looks kind of cartoonish, even though I told it to do it ultra realistic. And again, me versus the background, it just doesn't blend great versus this one, right? This looks real. This really looks very real, if not cinematic. So now you've seen the upgrades and the head-to-head -head comparisons versus the old model. Now let's talk about where you can use it and how much it costs. So two main places you can use this. One, the Google AI Studio, and then two, the Gemini app. If you are using the Gemini app, you need to be on a paid plan, either Pro or Ultra. And if you're using it, you need to A, select tools, which is gonna be create image, and you need to be on the thinking with three Pro. You need to have this selected. From there, you just prompt it as you normally would. Now, if you're using the Google AI Studio, you're gonna have a little more control in terms of your settings, but you do have to set up an API key. I'll link a video above the first half of it. The video is for N8N, but the first half follows and shows you how to set up a paid API key for something like Google AI Studio. It takes about five minutes.
And once you're in the Google AI Studio, you'll just hit Playground on the left, and then you'll select Nano Banana Pro here on the right. Now, while we're here, let's talk about the pricing. So the pricing, if you're using the Google AI Studio as well as the API, it's going to be 14 cents, so 13 and a half cents for either a 1K or a 2K image. And for a 4K image, it's gonna be double that. It's gonna be about 24, 25 cents. So just know that going in, that it's a bit more expensive versus the old model. Because the old model for the API was about four cents. So right off the bat, it's triple that, if not six times. Now, once I'm inside the studio and I've set up my key, you just prompt it the same way you would in the Gemini app, but you have some more kind of tools to play with, right? You obviously have your system instructions, but right here you can play with the aspect ratio. So, right, I can set one to one, nine to 16, 69, whatever. I don't have to do those little hacky things like we did before. It was like, okay, second image is gonna be like a blank 16 by nine or whatever. You can just automatically set it here. Secondly, this is where you can put the resolution, right? 1K and 2K, they both cost the same. It's 4K that's gonna double in price. And those are the big things that you can play with. So I hope that helps shed some light on some of these new Nano Banana Pro upgrades. From my point of view, this looks awesome. It looks like a legitimate leap forward. So I'm super excited to start integrating this into my AI content creation workflows. As always, make sure you check out all the resources inside of my school, which is linked down below, and I'll see you around.